Okay, so what is dermatosis? Dermatosis is a term that refers to diseases of the integumentary system. This classification includes everything on the surface of the body, skin, nails and hair. Any condition affecting the skin could be categorized as dermatosis. This doesn't include skin condition that involve inflammation. That would be dermatitis. Skin has several layers, including the epidermis, the dermis, and subcutaneous tissue. A dermatosis may involve changes in any or all of these skin layers. What are skin lesions? A skin lesion is a part of the skin that has an abnormal growth or appearance compared to the skin around it. Two categories of skin lesions exist, primary and secondary. Primary skin lesions are abnormal skin conditions present at birth or acquired over a person's lifetime. Secondary skin lesions are the result of irritated or manipulated primary skin lesions. For example, if someone scratches a mole until it bleeds, the resulting lesion, a crust, is now a secondary skin lesion. So remember, primary and secondary skin lesions. Trauma-related oral lesions are common in clinical practice of dentistry and they can impair patient's normal oral function and cause pain in patients eating, chewing and talking. An injury to the oral mucosa can result from physical, chemical or thermal trauma. Such injuries can result from accidental tooth bite, hard food, sharp edges of the teeth, hot food or excessive tooth brushing. Some injuries can also be caused by iatrogenic damage during dental treatment or other procedures related to oral cavity. Okay, so terms you may hear to describe dermatosis of the skin include rash, which is a wide variety of skin conditions that are red and raised, lesion, an area of skin that is abnormal, macu, a change in color or consistency of the skin, papu, a bump on the skin smaller than 1 cm in diameter. Nodule, a bump on the skin larger than 1 cm in diameter. Plague, a large area of affected skin with defined edge that may flake or peel. The cycles and bullet, raised bumps that are filled with fluid. Lichenification, a thick discoloration of skin, such as lichen on a tree. Pustules, a bump that contains pus, possibly due to infection. So, to remember, rash, lesion, macule, papule, nodule, plaque, these cycles, lichenification, pustules. Types of primary skin lesions. Birthmarks are primary skin lesions. As are moles, rashes, and acne. Birthmarks, moles, rashes, and acne. Moles, macules. Moles occur when cells in the skin grow in a cluster instead of being spread throughout the skin. These cells are called melanocytes and they make the pigment that gives skin its natural color. 
most made dark and after exposure to the sun during the teen years and during pregnancy. Macules are, are well circumscribed, flat lesions that noticeable because of their change from normal skin color. They may be red due to the presence of vascular lesions or inflammation or pigmented due to the presence of melanin, hemosiderin and any foreign material. You can see on the photos. Papules and plague. Papules are solid lesions raised above the skin surface that are smaller than 1 cm in diameter. Plaques are solid raised lesions that are over 1 cm in diameter. They are large papules. A papule is a raised lesion and most papules develop with many other papules. A patch of papules or nodules is called a plaque. Plaques are common in people with psoriasis. Papule is a formation rising above skin with diameter less than 1 cm to remember. So on the right picture you can see fibroepithelial poly resulting from chronic irritation. Papules and plaque. Plaque is a formation rising above the skin with a diameter of more than 1 cm. Leucoplaques develop due to the clamor irritation. You can see it on the picture. Okay, blisters, cold sores, fever blisters. These lesions are present deep in the dermis and the epidermis can be easily moved over them. This is a solid raised skin lesion. Most nodules are more than 2 cm in diameter. Nodules, smooth red-brown macules and papules, sometimes nodules. These lesions are present deep in the dermis, and the epidermis can be easily moved over them. This is a solid raised skin lesion. Most nodules are more than 2 cm in diameter. Bones nodules. Newborn babies have a few small white and drought bumps on the gingival surface. Examination of the oral cavity showed multiple firm, pearly white papules measuring 2 to 4 mm in diameter, grouped over the vestibular aspect of the alveolar ridge of the maxillary arch. Two similar lesions were seen on the mandibular area. These lesions were asymptomatic, non-tender and fixed to the mucosa. Oral mucosa was otherwise normal. A few mele were noted on his chin. Detailed systemic examination was normal. No specific therapy was prescribed. Within a couple of months, most of the lesions subsided spontaneously. Based on the clinical features and the natural course of the disease, a diagnosis of bones nodule was made. Small blisters are also called vesicles. These lesions can be a result of sunburns, steam burns, insect bites, Friction from shoes or clothes, viral infections. These are skin lesions filled with a clear fluid, less than half centimeter in size. Pustules. Pustules are small lesions filled with pus. They are typically the result of acne, boils, or empatigo. Raised lesions containing purulent materials. You can see on the picture. Uh, the cycle filled with purulent exudate or indicating the formation of a purulent abscess. Watch carefully. Larger recycles are called blisters or bullae. Elevated blisters containing clear fluid that are under 1 cm in diameter. Rash, irritable reactions. Rashes are lesions that cover small or large areas of skin. Uh, they can be caused by an allergic reaction. A common allergic reaction rash occurs when someone 
touches poison ivy, for example. Breastfed babies may develop a rash if they are allergic to a food group that their mother is consuming. Symptoms of a food allergy can include hives, itchiness, coughing, diarrhea. Rash is defined as a, uh, is defined as a widespread eruption of skin lesions. It's a very broad medical term. Rashes can vary in appearance greatly, and there are many potential causes. Hand, foot, and mouth is a childhood illness resulting from a viral infection. Symptoms include rash flat, non-itchy red blisters on the hands and soles of the feet, loss of appetite, ulcers on the throat, tongue, and mouth. Scarlet fever. Scarlet fever is a disease caused by toxin released by bacteria, Streptococcus pyogenes. Symptoms include a sore throat, rash, and fever. The rash has the following characteristics. Red blots, blots turn to fine pink red rash like sunburn, skin feels rough, when primary skin lesions are irritated, they can develop into secondary skin lesions. The most common secondary skin lesions include crust, ulcer, scale, scar, skin atrophy, so crust, or a scab is created when dried blood forms over a scratched and irritated skin lesion. Young kids often get this bacterial infection on their face and hands in the summer. The sores start out red and wet, they form a honey-colored crust. It's easily spread by touch, either from the source directly or items they've touched like clothing and toys, antibiotic cream, loosely covering sores, and lots of cleaning can stop the spread. To help prevent it, wash any broken skin, scrapes, cuts, and insect bites right away. Don't remember and don't forget. Erosion. Yeah, you can see on the pictures. So erosion is an epidermis defect above basal layer. Uh, you can see it even intraoral. Ulcer. Ulcers are typically caused by bacterial infection or physical trauma. They are often accompanied by poor circulation. Also, is a skin defect spreading deeper than basal layer. Scale. Scales are patches of skin cells that build up and then flake off the skin. Crack. is a linear defect in the epidermis. You can see it on the tongue, in the right picture. Scar. Some scratches, cuts, and scrapes will leave scars that are not replaced with healthy, normal skin. Instead, the skin returns as a sick, raised scar. This scar is called a colloid. Skin atrophy. Skin atrophy occurs when areas of your skin become thin and wrinkled from overuse of topical steroids or poor circulation. The tongue. The tongue is a muscular organ in the mouth of most vertebrates that manipulates food for mastication and is used in the act of swallowing. It has importance in the digestive system and is a primary organ of taste in the gustatory system. The tongue's upper surface, dorsum, is covered by taste buds housed in the Merrill's lingual papillae. It is sensitive and kept moist by saliva and is richly supplied with nerves and blood vessels. 
A major function of the tongue is the enabling of speech in humans and vocalization in other animals. The human tongue anatomy. The human tongue is divided into two parts, an oral part at the front and a pharyngeal part at the back. The left and right sides are also separated along most of its length by a vertical section of fibrous tissue, the lingual septum, that results in a groove, the medical sulcus, on the tongue surface. The human tongue is divided is, uh, into anterior and posterior parts by the terminal sulcus, which is a V-shaped groove. The apex of the terminal sulcus is marked by a blind foramen. The foramen siccum, which is a remnant of the median trioid diverticulum in early embryonic development. The anterior oral part is a visible part situated at the front. It makes roughly two thirds the length of the tongue. The posterior pharyngeal part is a part closest to the throat roughly one-third of its length. These parts differ in terms of their embryological development and nerve supply. Anatomy of the tongue, you can get familiar here on the peak. So the anterior tongue is at its apex, thin and narrow. It's directed forward against the lingual surfaces of the lower incisor teeth. The posterior part is, at its root, directed backward and connected with the hyoid bone by the hyoglossy and genoglossy muscles and the hyoglossal membrane with the epiglottis by three glossoepiglottic folds of mucous membrane with the soft palate of the glossopalatine arch and with the pharynx by the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle and the mucous membrane. It also forms the anterior wall of the oral pharynx. Microanatomy. The upper surface of the tongue is covered in masticatory mucosa, a type of oral mucosa which is of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Emptied in, these are numerous papillae that house the taste buds and their taste receptors. The lingual papillae consist of filet form, fungiform, valate, and foliate papillae. And only the filet form papillae are not associated with any taste buds. The tongue can also divide itself in dorsal and ventral surface. The dorsal surface is a stratified squamous keratinized epithelium which is characterized by numerous mucosal projections called papillae. The lingual papillae covers the dorsal side of the tongue towards the front of the terminal groove. The ventral surface is stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium which is smooth. So on the picture you can see the section through the human tongue. Lingual papillae. The dorsal surface of the mammalian tongue is covered with four kinds of papillae. Foliate, circumvallate, fungiform, filiform. With the exception of the filiform papillae, these types of papillae contain taste buds and are known as the gustatory papillae. Filiform papilla. Okay, filiform papilla are the most numerous of the lingual papilla. They are fine, small, cone-shaped papilla covering most of the dorsum of the tongue. Uh, they are responsible for giving the tongue its texture and are responsible for the sensation of touch. Unlike the other kinds of papilla, filiform papilla do not contain taste buds again. They cover most of the front two-thirds of the tongue surface. 
They appear as very small conical or cylindrical surface projections and are arranged in rows which lie parallel to the sulcus terminalis. At the tip of the tongue, these rows become more transverse. Filiform papilla. Histologically, they are made up of a regular connective tissue course with a keratin containing epithelium which has fine secondary threads. Heavy keratinization of filiform papilla occurring, for instance, in cats gives a tongue a roughness that is characteristic of these animals. These papilla have a whitish tint owing to the thickness and density of their epithelium. The epithelium has undergone a peculiar modification as the cells have become cone-like and elongated into dense, overlapping, brush-like threads. They also contain a number of elastic fibers, which render them firmer and more elastic than the other types of papilla. The larger and longer papilla of this group are sometimes termed papilla conica. Fungiform papilla. Fungiform papilla magnified and sectional diagram. The fungiform papilla are club-shaped projections on the tongue, generally red in color. They found on the tip of the tongue, scattered among the filiform papilla, which are mostly present on the tip and sides of the tongue. They have taste buds on their upper surface, which can distinguish the five tastes. Sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. They have a core of connective tissue. Foliate papilla are short vertical folds and are present on each side of the tongue. They are located on the sides at the back of the tongue, just in front of the palatoglossal arc of the fossas. There are four or five vertical folds and their size and shape is variable. The foliate papilla appear as a series of red color, leaf-like ridges of mucosa. They are covered with epithelium, like keratin, and so are softer and bear many taste buds. They are usually bilaterally symmetrical. Sometimes they appear small and conspicuous, and at other times they are prominent. The circumvallate papilla or valate papilla are dome-shaped structures on the human tongue that vary in number from 8 to 12. They are situated on the surface of the tongue immediately in front of the foramen secum and sulcus terminalis, forming a row on either side. The two rows run backward and medially and meet in the midline. Each papilla consists of a projection of mucous membrane from 1 to 2 mm, wide, attached to the bottom of a circular depression of the mucous membrane. The margin of the depression is elevated to form a vol, vallum, and between this and the papilla is a circular sulcus, termed the fossa. Taste buds. These structures are involved in detecting the five elements of taste perception – salty, sour, bitter, sweet, and umami. Taste buds contain taste cells that communicate with the surface of the papilla through a taste pore. Stimulation of the taste cells leads to the stimulation of gustatory nerve fibers and receiving sweet, salty, bitter, and sour sensations. You can look at the picture. Taste buds are round and shaped structures in the epithelium of lingual papilla, mm, fungiform and circumvallate papilla. Taste buds contain the taste receptor cells, which are also known as gustatory cells. The taste receptors are located around the small structures known as papilla found on the upper surface of the tongue, soft palate, upper esophagus, the cheek, and epiglottis. Tongue diseases can be congenital or acquired and are multiple in number. 
consider it according to a surgical sieve. Some example conditions which can involve the tongue are discussed below. Glossitis is a general term for tongue inflammation, which can have various etiologies, uh, for example, infection. Classification of diseases of tongue. So, diseases of tongue excludes erythroplakia of tongue, focal epithelial hyperplasia, hair leukoplakia, Leukodemia, leukoplakia of tongue, Markel glossy congenital, submucous fibrosis of tongue. And uh, you can just write down everything. So, for example, it includes glossies, glossities, geographic tongue, median rhomboid glossities. So, to glossitis, which includes atrophic glossitis, uh, can be abscess of tongue, traumatic ulceration of tongue, other specified glossitis, glossitis unspecified, ulcer of tongue, NOS. Geographic tongue can be benign migratory glossitis, glossitis areatic sloviata, median rhomboid glossitis, hypertrophy of tongue papilla can be coated tongue, hairy tongue, black hairy tongue, lingua velosa nigra, uh, hypertrophy of folate papilla, other specified hypertrophy of tongue papilla, hairy tongue due to antibiotics, hypertrophy of folate papilla, other specified hypertrophy of tongue papilla, hairy tongue due to antibiotics, hypertrophy of tongue papilla, unspecified, Plicate tongue, fissured furrowed scrotal tongue, uh, glossy pyrosis, burning tongue, painful tongue, glossodynia, other specified glossodynia, glossodynia unspecified, other diseases of tongue like craniated tongue, hypertrophy of tongue, hemihypertrophy of tongue, excludes macroglossia, like you have to guys make notes here. Atrophy of tongue, hemiatrophy of tongues excludes atrophy of tongue papilla, other specified disease of tongue, disease of lingual tongue cell, disease of tongue unspecified. Disease of tongue. Independent group like anatomical language of development, folded tongue, rhomboid glossite, various injuries, chemical, mechanical, physical, and can be dependent symptomatic. Disquamative glossitis, black fleecy language. In infectious diseases, viral, candidiasis, syphilis, etc. Gastrointestinal diseases, So, anomalies of development of tongue can be aglossia, glossoptos, microglossia, macroglossia, and kiloglossia, the split language, a folded tongue, a diamond shaped glossy. Examples of congenital disorders which affect the tongue include agglossion, complete absence of the tongue at birth, ankyloglossion. Tongue tie where the lingual frenum tethers the tongue to the floor of the mouth. If it interferes with oral hygiene and feeding, phrenectomy may be indicated. Examples of congenital disorders which affect the tongue include hypoglossia, congenitally short tongue, or microglossy. Macroglossia can be an abnormally large tongue seen in some disorders such as Down syndrome. Also, macro, also macroglossia can be an acquired condition as well. Glossoptosis is a medical condition and abnormality which involves the downward displacement of retraction of the tongue. It may cause non-fusion of the heart palate, causing cleft palate. It's one of the features of Pierre Robin sequence and Down syndrome. Surgical treatment can look like shown on the pictures. 
look carefully. Cleft tongue. Basic tongue. Completely cleft tongue is a rare condition caused by failure of the lateral lingual swellings to merge. More common is an incompletely cleft tongue, a palinca's midline fissure. This is normally classed as fissure tongue. Folded glossitis takes its name from the many external manifestations and presence of faults. Sometimes with this type of disease, a tongue with cracks is present from birth. If it doesn't hurt, not loose, and there are no other unpleasant sensations, then the condition is considered normal. However, with deep cracks in the tongue, treatment is still necessary. Rhomboid glossitis is characterized by the presence of a site of a rhombic or oval shape in red-blue color. It's located in the middle of the tongue, in the region of the posteroid cert. The tongue is cracked in the center so that the entire affected area is as if divided into two parts. This type may be chronic and with exacerbations, pain and burning begin. Characterized by rhomboid or oval in shape, changes occur in the tongue mucosa in the midline, just anterior to the firm incision. Disquamative glossitis is characterized by focal lesion of the surface with almost imperceptible shallow cracks. There is a dim disquamation of the papilla and the formation of a whitish heterogeneous layer. Affected areas are quickly restored, acquiring a natural color and neighboring ones become inflamed. The geometry of the white areas plaque on the surface often changes. In advanced cases, due to the large number of cracks, a person feels the tongue is loose. Cart of compliances. The top of the tongue monitors the heart and lungs. Its middle part, the stomach and pancreas. These zones are located on the middle fold of the tongue as well as the liver and spleen. By the root of the tongue, it's possible to judge the state of the intestine and by lateral sections, kidneys. The middle fold of the tongue reflects the condition of the spine. Excited state of the body, second flat middle fold. Second is spinal curvature in the lumbar. Third is spinal curvature in the trochaic. Spinal curvature is a cervical, chronic intercolis, dyspersia, two springs on the lateral surfaces of the tongue, then comes serotoclosic neurasthenia, alcoholism, language like tongue trembling. Chronic colon diseases, many small intertwined faults, badly kidney work, column function disorder, intoxication of a large intestine, digestive tract intoxication, weakness of form activity, can be chronic bronchitis here, bilateral pneumonia, brown plaque, emphysema of lungs. Color of tongue. Word language indicates a suspected acute infectious disease. Purple signals that there may be disorders in the circulatory and respiratory system. White rate is a sign of the treat of constipation. Yellow indicates serious disorders in digestion. Gray speaks of stomach and intestinal diseases that have become chronic. Gray black may indicate increased acidity. If the tongue is red from the sides, liver side disorders are possible. Too bright language indicates possible exhaustion of the body. Which tongue are you? So here on this photo, you can choose a tongue which is uh, uh, looks like yours. And you can possibly predict what... Uh, um, uh, like what disease you can have. So 
I'll give you some time on it. Okay, to continue. Uh, cyanotic tongue is on the left. Bloodless tongue indicates anemia and sharp exertion of the body. Purple tongue on the right indicates blood stagnation. The tongue with dark leaf spots also indicate blood condition. Signal that the circulatory and respiratory system may be disturbed. Yellow tongue. Yellow indicates serious disorders in digestion. Ordinarily, yellow tongue is a harmless condition that causes a thick yellowish coating of the tongue. Yellow tongue tends to occur when dead skin cells, bacteria or discoloring particles become trapped or build up on the tongue surface. The strawberry tongue. Strawberry tongue is a symptom of a condition and some of these conditions can be serious. A red, swollen and bumpy tongue can also be a sign of scarlet fever. Raspberry tongue. So it can mean vitamin deficiency, low levels of vitamin B12 and folate can cause a strawberry raspberry tongue. But this deficiency will likely be diagnosed if you are experiencing more common symptoms. Everyone knows the coloring property of blueberries, blackberries, and irons. Some local drugs have such an effect. Cough, lollipops, therapeutic pastiles. Black hairy tongue. Black hairy tongue is a condition of the tongue in which the small bumps on the tongue elongate with a black or brown discoloration, giving a black and hairy appearance. The appearance may be alarming, but it's a harmless condition. Predisposing factors include smoking, serostomia, dry months, soft diet, poor oral hygiene, and certain medications. Management is by improving oral hygiene, especially scraping or brushing the tongue. The kind of plaque in tongue. Plaque with spaces is a sign that immunity is weakened. Thin plaque in the tongue, the disease either just begins or flows in a light, superficial form. The sicker the rate, the greater the fear that the disease has become chronic. The high coverage of the tongue most often indicates the language of common diseases, such as gastritis, gastric or duodenical ulcer. Candiosis. Candida albicans is the most commonly implicated organism in this condition. They are carried in the mouth of about 50% of the world's population as a normal component of the oral microbiota. This candidal carriage state is not considered a disease, but when candida species become pathogenic and invade hot tissues, oral candiosis can occur. This change usually constitutes an opportunistic infection by normally harmless microorganisms because of local, um, can be mucosal or systemic factors, altering host immunity. Leicoplakia. It's whitish patch or plaque that can be characterized clinically or pathologically, sorry as any other disease and which is not associated with any other physical or chemical causative agent except the use of tobacco. It can occur everywhere in the oral cavity, but tongue is one of the commonest sites. If it occurs on tongue, it's called a chronic superficial glossitis. Ulcers and infectious diseases. Quite several ulcers, which are most in nature of lacerations and contusions, are produced by sudden biting trauma, either during epileptic seizure or the result of a sudden blow to the jaw while tongue lies um, between upper and lower teeth. You can see it in the pictures. So ulcers so lingual frenum is in neonates with natal lower incisors ray referred as rigus ulcer or riga fat disease. Shallow but persistent tongue ulcers, tongue ulcers, sorry, especially along the posterior ventral surfaces are common in patients with lichen planus, 
various nutritional deficiencies, uh, deficiencies sorry, and hematological problems. The lateral margins and tip of tongue are frequently involved in several episodes of recurrent toes ulcers. Benign tumors of tongue. Benign mouse tumor is abnormal growth located in the mouth or tongue. The growths are not cancerous and very rarely spread to other body parts. The condition is most common in adults over the age of 60. The risk of developing an abnormal growth within the mouth is greater increased in smokers. Fibroma. A fibroma is a benign tumor-like growth made up mostly of fibrous or connective tissue. Tumor-like growth such as fibroma develop and uncontrolled cell growth occurs for an unknown reason or as a result of injury or local irritation. Fibromas can form anywhere in the body and usually do not require treatment or removal, usually painless surgical excision. Papilloma is a general medical term for a tumor of the skin or mucous membrane with finger-like projections. Papillomas are either pedunculated or sessile growth on any surface of oral mucous membrane. Multiple papilloma are occur in Cowden syndrome, Down syndrome, surgical excision. Hemangioma. Hemangioma is a benign tumor of dilated blood vessels. It's also known as a Portwine stain, strawberry hemangioma, and salmon patch. They are characterized by hyperplasia of blood vessels, usually veins and capillaries, in a focal area of submucosal connective tissue. Surgical or invasive treatment of oral hemangiomas has involved, has evolved. Complete surgical excision of these lesions offers the best chance of cure, but often because of the extent of this benign lesion, significant sacrifice of tissue is necessary. For example, lesions of the tongue may require near total gosectomy. Lymphangioma. Lymphangiomas are benign hemangiomatous tumors of the lymphatic channels. They are thought to be developmental malformations arising from sequestration of lymphatic tissues that do not communicate with the rest of the lymphatic channels. Oral lesions are most frequently found on the tongue. Treatment can be injection or sclerosing solutions, cryosurgery, intravascular immobilization with silicon spheres. Cheilitis is inflammation of the lips. In a general term, and there are many recognized types and different causes. Cheilitis can be either acute or chronic. Most cheilitis is caused by exogenous factors such as dryness, chapping, and acute sun exposure. Okay, cheilitis. This inflammation may include the perioral skin, the skin around the mouth, your mouth, the vermilion border, or the labial mucosa, the skin and the vermilion border, and more commonly involved as the mucosa is less affected by inflammatory and allergic reaction. Causes of chelitis can be chapping due to cold and wind. Actinic break of the lip can be contact chelitis, drug-induced, infective, angular, ultraviolet, actinic, trauma, dermatosis, nutritional, plasma cell, exfoliative, granulomatous, and etc. Chelitis. Fungal chelitis occurs predominantly in the elderly and is manifested by peeling of the lips, the reddening, cracking, and swelling. This chelitis is easily confused with eczema. Cateral chelitis manifested by inflammation of the rings of the lips and occurs under the influence of the external environment. Cateral chelitis is characterized by frequent complications in the form of ulcers and inflammations, as well as a disquamation and swelling of the skin. 
Baltis und Kalitis or purulent grand colitis affects salivary glands and proceeds most often with relapses. Salivary glands are covered with erosions and growth. Lips are covered with ulcers or infections into otology. Penicillin colitis appears with the abuse of drugs containing penicillin. After passing through the first stage of the disease, the swelling of the lip can begin to separate from the lips. In the absence of treatment, a lesion of the oral mucosa is characteristic disturbing the patient with a burning sensation on the inside of the cheeks, tongue, and palate. Exfoliative colitis, initially determined by swelling of the lips. Because of the pain, the patient cannot completely shut up. A lesion occurs not only on the surface of the lips, but also on the mucous membrane. With the development of the disease, on the lips appear large scales with the removal of which red inflamed tissue opens. This form occurs as a rule chronically and is complicated by problems with the three node gland. Eczematous form of colitis is a result of various allergies and can even be caused by lipstick or powder. At the same time, lips are mucous and mucous membranes swell strongly, dry skin flakes separate, revealing expressions and erosion, which later form crusts and cracks. Angular infectious often affects in childhood under the influence of fungi and staphylococcus. Causes of the disease are infections of the nasopharynx, a lack of riboflavin in the body, and an incorrect bite. Patient complaints with this form of the disease are painful sensations when opening the mouth as cracks form in corners, often with separation. Cracks can grow to the chin and affect the entire skin around the mouth. Actinic chelitis, chelitis expressed by the formation of a red border on the lips with prolonged exposure to sunlight. This form of colitis can be of two forms, exudative, uh, exudative, hyperemia, edema, cracks, erosion, and also recycles, and dry. And dry, uh, bright red border with white scales. Even after treatment, spring and summer relapse is possible. Apostomatic colitis affects only lower lip. The disease is expressed, expressed by swelling, inflammation of the salivary glands, hyperemia, purulent discharge from the salivary glands, inflammation easily palpable. Riboflaviosis colitis affects in the absence of the required amount of riboflavin, vitamin B, B to determine this form can be on the pale mucus, but bright red border of the lips. The shell is covered with scales and peeled off, characterized by the defeat of the corners of the mouth by erosion with yellowish crusts. The patient feels pain when closing the jaws and burning mouths. Chapping of the lips. Reaction to adverse environmental conditions caused by exposure to freezing cold or to hot dry wines. Uh, keratin of the vermilion loses its plasticity so that the lips become sore, cracked and scaly. Affected person tends to lick the lips or to pick at the scales which may aggravate the condition. Treatment. Petroleum jelly and avoidance of the adverse environmental condition. Contact colitis affect all age groups, but adults more than children. Lip cosmetics are the most common allergen source in women and two spades in men. Medications in the elderly. Dental materials and oral hygiene products in all age groups. Reactions to food mainly affect children. Angular colitis, synonym angular stomati stomatitis. Acute or chronic inflammation of the skin and contiguous labial mucous membrane and the angles of the mouth. Etiology: Dribble of salva causing eczematous colitis, a form of contractory dermatitis. Overhang of upper lip resulting in deep furrows, marionette lines. 
dry chapped lips, proliferation of bacteria, bitigo, yeasts, or a virus called sores. Angular colitis. Angular colitis is a condition that causes red swollen patches in the corner of your mouth where your lips meet and make an angle. Other names for it are perlec and angular stomatitis. You can get it on one side of your mouth or on both sides at the same time. Colitis granularis is a rare inflammatory disorder of the lip. It's mainly characterized by swelling of the lip with hyperplasia or salivary glands, secretion of a clear, sick mucus, and variable inflammation. Enlargement and chronic exposure of a mucous membrane of the lower lip because, uh, becomes affected by the environment, leading to erosion, ulceration, crusting. Colitis granularis is more common in adult males, also cases have been described in women and children also. In Caucasians, it's associated with a relatively high incidence of squamous cell carcinoma of the lip. Also, there may be genetic susceptibility. No definitive cause has been established. Treatment may include surgical excision by vermil vermilonectomy, sometimes called a lip shave but treatment varies for each individual. Eczematous colitis. Eczematous colitis is inflammation of the lips presenting as redness with dryness and scaling. It may also be called lip dermatitis. Presenting as redness with dryness, scaling and fissuring. Major causes atopic dermatitis and irritant or allergic contact reactions Treatment emollients and tropical, topical corticeroids. A potent steroid may be required to bring the condition under control. Exfoliative colitis. Exfoliative colitis is a rare reactive condition, condition presenting as continuous peeling of the lips. Factitial colitis can present exfoliative colitis when it's due to attention seeking or factitial behavior or an obsessive compulsive tendency to pick or chop the leaves. In translation, folium means leaf. Exfoliative flake leaf or coarse spelling accounts for 45% of all hellages. The age of the patient is from 18 to 32 years, more often women are ill. 80% of patients are diagnosed with uh, hypertroidism, increased anxiety, hidden depression. The disease occurs spontaneously provoked more often by stress. When apparently health a red lip trail, dryness first appears and scales and make a formation and crust are formed. Tightly soldered with the subject epitalum. The affected area from client's line to the middle of the red trail doesn't pass to the mucosa, skin and corners of the mouth. The lip can be swelling. When the flakes are rejected, there is no bleeding and the thin brilliant epitalum is exposed. In exudative form, crusts are integrated with serious exudate. When the crusts dry, lip mobility is restricted. The crusts thicken, have a honey color, and can hang in the form of an apron, covering the whole lip. When talking, laughter, or, or there is a violent rupture of the mucosa of the peripheral regions, and therefore hemographic crusts are formed. In a rare reactive condition, presenting as continuous spelling of the lips. You can see it here. Lip, so chopped lips, lips can become extremely dry and cracked any time due to the year due to environmental factors such as cold weather, dry air and wind exposure. Break cancerous lesions of the oral cavity and skin of face and lip vermilion with particular emphasis of etiopathogenesis. Leicoplakia. This term often causes confusion and controversy. According to World Health Organization definition, leukoplakia is a white patch of plaque that cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other disease. Smokeless tobacco is associated with developing a leukoplakia in 8.4% of cases. 
Clinically, leukoplakia presents in different views, including thin, thick, or homogeneous, granular, or nodular, and proliferative vercus leukoplakia. The risk of malignant transformation significantly increases among people aged 60 to 70 years old. Leukoplakias on the floor of mouth, lateral tongue, and lower lip show more dysplasia or malignant transformation. The possible risk factors for malignant transformation are female gender. Leukoplakia has no specific histological feature and is only a clinical term. However, histopathologic findings are hip hyperkeratosis with or without epithelial dysplasia. A photomicrograph or a leukoplakic lesion showing multipetalial dysplasia, you can see it here. Leukoplakia. So, epithelial dysplasia is divided into three subclassifications mild, moderate, and severe. As is the presence of epithelial dysplasia, and the gold standard for the detection of malignant transformation of the lesions, but there are three major problems as follows. First, as the diagnosis is subjective, it cannot be standardized. Second, not only all lesions, lesions with dysplasia do not become a malignant lesion, but also some of them even regress. And third, in some cases, carcinoma develops from lesions without any previous history of epithelial dysplasia. Other oral white lesions such as frictional keratose, mosquitobrocarum are not considered and leukoplakia and they are not premalignant lesions and they are reversible after elimination of suspected etiological factors. Additionally, other oral white lesions such as candioidosis, lichen planus, leukedema should not be considered as leukoplakia and they have specific microscopic features. Proliferative ferocious leukoplakia. Proliferative ferocious leukoplakia is a rare lesion. In the early stage, it's similar to conventional leukoplakia, both clinically and histopathologically, but in the advanced stage, it appears clinically as varicose carcinoma. carcinoma. PVL is classified as a potentially malignant lesion in the oral cavity. In the clinic, the lesion initially develops as a focal hyperkeratosis, which gradually progresses to form an exophilic multifocal lesion. Therefore, it's characterized by four phases. Focal early development, geographic expansion over time, development of severicoid vertebrates, and malignant transformation. Erythroplakia. Clinically, the lesions present as flat to slightly raised red lesions. The histopathological characteristic include the lack of excess surface keratinization, some degree of dysplasia, and even carcinoma. A photomicrograph showing atrophic oral epithelium with atypia, squamization of the basal cell layer, and underlying chronic inflammation in a clinically diagnosed erythroplakia. Versus hyperplasia. Oral varicose hyperplasia appears as a white or pink single or multifocal plaque or nodule with a varicose or papillary surface resembling as a large wart. Moderate dysplasia is predominant than mild dysplasia and is correlated with consumption of different tobacco preparations. Varicose gum hyperplasia can develop a malignancy. Histopathologic features include sharp and keratotic projections with keratin filled invagination without obvious fibrovascular cores. It never extends below that of the adjacent, adjacent normal epithelium. Mild dysplasia associated with a lichenoid interface inflammatory reaction can also be seen. In 68% of cases, heavy inflammatory cell infiltration, including lymphocytes, Plasma cells and histocytes can be observed. Lateral and downward growths, broadened and bulbous like red ridges are formed. In a broad front invasion occurs, it can be designated as a verrucous carcinoma. A verrucous carcinoma can be distinguished 
distinguished from a verosus hyperplasia by a peripheral buttress shoulder and extension below the lower border of the normal epithelium. Histopathologic features. So you can see a microphotograph of a clinical verosus lesion showing epithelial proliferation. Oral lichen planus. Oral lichen planus is a chronic inflammatory disease. It suggested that all P is a T cell mediated autoimmune disease. Induction of apoptosis of the basal cells of epithelium by CD8 plus T cells in the possible mechanism of development of OLP68. Who considers OLP as a very precancerous lesion, especially in the presence of dysplasia? Oral lichen planus is an ongoing chronic inflammatory condition that affects mucous membranes inside your mouth. Oral light lichen planus may appear as white, lazy patches, red swollen tissues, or open sores. This lesion may cause burning, pain, or other discomfort. Figure 4, you can see a microphotograph of a lichen planus lesion showing pentosis, or to shape reed ridges and men like a refraction of lymphocyte in the immediately underlying the epithelium. Lichenoid dysplasia. The term lichenoid dysplasia was introduced in 1985 used in cases of lichenoid stomatitis with dysplasia. Etiopatogenesis of LD is different from that of OLP. In OLP, lichenoid infiltration represents cell-mediated immune response provoked by different antigens, whereas in LD, lichenoid infiltration occurs against atopical epithelial cells. Lichenoid dysplasia mostly appears as an erythematous or leukoplakic area on the buccal mucosa or gingiva and is not a symmetrical lesion that can be found in OLP. Microscopic findings of this lesion consist of hyperle hyperperikeratosis or hyperkeratosis, epithelial dysplasia and band-like lymphocyte infiltration. The basal cell hyperplasia and ATP or other than degeneration is an important histological feature. Lack of liqu uh, liquefaction, degeneration and intact or even hyperplastic basal cell layer is a major distinguishing characteristic of LD from OLP. Here you can see a photomi photomicrograph showing multipetalal dysplasia, surface hyperkeratosis, and lacanoid mucosis. Chronic discoid lupus erythematous is a chronic form of cutaneous lupus which clinically presents as an erythematous, scaly, and depigmented plaque. Head and neck area is affected in 41% of all cases. Oral lesions are a symmetrical distribution affected the palate, buccal mucosa, and tongue. The buccal mucosa can be affected in 15% of the patients and may transform to leukoplakia. The microscopic features include, include hyperkeratosis, degeneration of the basal layer, and subepithelial lymphocytic infiltration. Deep inflammatory infiltration offer perivascular orientation distinguished CDLE lessons from oil piece. You can see in the figure six. References. Again, references. And thank you for your attention.